Hello, um, my name is Daniel Joseph Ringus and I'm here to present Near Optimal Per Clip Lagrangian Multiplier Prediction in HEBC. I'm from Trinity College Dublin, a part of the SIG Media Group, along with my co-authors Francois Petit and Anil Kokoram. So, in video compression, we know that we could represent uh, the performance of a codec uh, um, with a rate distortion curve, where we have a bit rate versus some quality metric in this example, PSNR, and we want to be as close to the top left as possible because this will represent a video which is which has low bit rate and high quality. And within codecs, ex um, there exists an optimized uh, rate distortion optimization and in a video codec it focuses on trying to minimize an objective function which it has a Lagrangian multiplier applied to the as a trade-off for the distortion and the rate within in a compressed bit stream and we know that this that manipulating this has some impact on the performance of a codec on a given clip so for exist for example here, we have a single sequence which was encoded using the same encoding parameters on the same codec. Just the only difference was we applied a multiplier k to, lam to, to adjust lambda from its original value, which is, is um, lambda naught, and had that work in the codec. And we see that a few of the curves which are not the original one, which is k is equal to 1, and are seen here er, having a better performance. We could actually represent this nicer in terms of k versus bd rate and we want a negative bd rate in this graph that we get an improvement in these cases here. Now the this was a little bit exhaustive because in order to get each one of these points we needed to encode the vid video of, of for um, uh, multiple operating points in order to generate an RD curve and then calculate the BD rate between in the curve, the value which we have here, as well as is when k is equal to 1, which you'll see there's no improvement, it's the same because, well, it's the same. Um, the reason why, but we do see some change in performance and we don't believe that this just means that oh, the Lagrangian multiplier established was wrong and that's not what we're doing. We believe that because it was established on a very small corpus of video clips, it's not optimal for a given clip and we could possibly optimize this on a per clip approach. And we've started work on this and we presented work at, on this at Electronic Imaging and in SPIE last year and we applied direct optimization methods which required multiple video encodes to determine the best possible bit rate improvement at an e at equal quality for an existing codec. So in order to do this we decided we looked at a lot of videos. We looked at almost 10,000 video clips. Um each of these video clips were 5 seconds long and it get, had a wide range of content and we believe it was a typical representation of modern video as we pulled from a number of data sets. The majority of our clips, however, came from the YouTube user-generated content data set. And in applying our direct optimization methods in our prior work using the using X265 as our codec, we're able to get imp great improvements. However, it requires roughly 60 video encoders to find the best improvement. Now, let's take a look at this graph. This is how we're going to be representing a lot of our data going forward. That we have on our y-axis the fraction of our corpus, the data set, the fraction of our corpus, which has as the, an improve, a certain number, a certain BD rate improvement or better. For example, here at 60% of the corpus, this has a, a say, 0.8% BD rate it improvement or better. And we could read it off the other way. We could say, all right, it ha what percentage of our corpus has a 2% BD rate improvement or more. We could look at this and we could go over here and we'll see that it's like 18, 19% and of our corpus had a 2% BD rate improvement or better. Now, in our previous work, we came across a couple questions which we didn't quite answer then and we've answered in this work. Um, so the first question is, is there a single value which is optimal across the corpus? 
And th the way which we approached this was we tried to see, all right, what is the average BD rate improvement across as the corpus per value of K? And we see that there's a couple values, a range of values here where there is an improvement in this is um, 0.7 to 0.8 range. We have our best BD rate improvement and across the entire corpus. And we also could see that from the direct optimizer, we have a histogram here where we had our optimal K and it tended to be in that same AM 0.7 to 0.8 range. However, these don't tell the full story. We have these, we could see on, on our graph where we have the direct optimizer being the black line. And we could see what happens if we had every clip have the same value for K and was encoded and to see what the BD rate improvement happened. Now, the, on the good side, we have roughly two thirds of clips which have some form of improvement. That it's this y axis crossing line where x is equal, to, where the BD rate improvement is zero, this will indicate the percentage of clips in our corpus using our er, um, encoder settings, settings had some improvement. And 66x%, two thirds of the corpus is good. It's it's interesting. It's fun. It's really positive to see. But it also means that that other third of the corpus really does does not like that the new adjustment and performs horribly compared to the original settings of the codec. The other question which we had to ask is: Is there a way we could? predict what the optimal Lagrangian multiplier should be based on the video content. So we tried to see it, this in a pre previous work. We looked at only a few features from the compressed bit stream using um, classical machine learning techniques. Um, in particular, we looked at random forest implementation and it showed some promise. And we've expanded on the at work here. And what we've done is we've used who's um, VGG features from a single frame of each clip, as well as an expanded set of features from the compressed bit stream to see what will happen if we had more features, if we could more accurately determine K and by extension, what the Lagrangian multiplier should be when compressing a particular clip. So the features from the compressed bit stream, which we used is we had a few features per clip and a few features per frame. Um, these are all generated from um, the first pass of the encoder and we get this information and we feed it into our model, the model which is is most but properly detailed on in our paper and we get the following results. We no, the first thing to note is that the direct optimizer we know it took like roughly six day encodes codes Odes uh, to find the best improvement, whereas our deep learning system, as well as the a random forest, which was the machine learning system which we each chose, was required only ten encodes to find the best improvement. So that is a reduction in video encodes, which is always good to see. And we can see that it's we are approaching our direct optimizer with deep learning being in the. E a, um, light blue, the dash blue line here, and it get it near, nearly gets to the same level as the direct optimizer, but at a fraction of the encodes. Uh, similarly, we could see that our random forest is at least better using the machine learning technique. We at least are better than just always using a single oh, um, value of of k consistently, and we see this improvement here. Um, we could also look at this in terms of a table, and I know that this is a lot of numbers in one slide, and it's not, uh, it's a bit, it's much. So we're just going to focus on two things. We're going to focus on our best system for this paper, which was using a, a DNN, using the features from the compressed bit stream and VGG, and as well as comparing it to how our direct optimization and methods worked. So the first metric which we want to look at is is what portion of the clips had some improvement, any improvement at all. And the direct optimizer we had 95% of our corpus had an improvement, whereas our deep learning system we had 89% of the clips had some improvement. All of this is still better than 
in our machine learning techniques from the past and even with the expanded feature sets as well as just using a single value consistently throughout the entire corpus. And the other thing which we we'll, we looked at is what we are calling our average final gain. And this is value is not the is just the average gain if we were to take any clip which performed worst and say all right that reduction in performance it will zero it out because we'll have a system to, our system will choose say all right do we want to use the default old, old encoder or do we want to use our little tweak to it and it will always choose at the the worst performer will now be zero instead of a negative BD rate performance and across our corpus the direct optimization technique it had a 1.87 percent average final gain and our deep learning technique had a 1.1 on 1 percent BD rate improvement average final gain throughout. Now the conclusions which we could take from this are as follows. Um, we were able to produce comparable results to our the direct optimization on techniques at a fraction of the computational cost and while it we know that we do incur some additional complexity by having the machine learning or the deep learning techniques, we believe that that is going to be, we haven't done any proper investigation as to how the exact trade off, but just looking at the um, number of encodes, we have significantly decreased that. And we're able to get 1% BD rate savings across the corpus when deployed as a supplement to the codec, which was the results I just showed. And we know that we should be able to have further improvements if we were to focus only at target bit rates or specific regions of the RD curve instead of taking the entire curve. So say if we wanted to focus on say high bit rates or low bit rates, it, it um, encodes, we might be able to get further improvements. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.